Good evening. I am Pastor Louise Thornton at the House of God, Washington, D.C. Welcome to our Feast of Dedication program. For more than 40 years, we have celebrated the Feast of Dedication by way of poetry, songs, and skits. Simply put, the Feast of Dedication tells how the Jews struggled to maintain their religious freedom during the time the Greeks were in power. It tells how a small band of soldiers, Jewish soldiers, fought against a great Syrian army and they prevailed. However, that temple was desecrated. And at the cleansing of the temple, they found a small cruise of oil. Enough to last for only one night, but it lasts for eight nights. Nes Kodol Haoshom. A great miracle happened there. If you want to know about the Feast of Dedication, it's found in the Bible. St. John chapter 10, verses 22 and 3 says that at Jerusalem, it was at the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem, and Jesus was there at Solomon's porch. We want you to enjoy our service on tonight. Again, you are welcome. Thank you for coming. Amen. We thank God for um, our pastor, my pastor, Elect Lady Thornton. We thank her for giving the uh, welcome. We want to welcome everyone on tonight, um, as she said, to our service. Amen. We're looking forward to the word of God is your temple dedicated. We're going to turn it now into the hands of our elder Solomon for him to do our prayer. Let us pray. Father God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Father, we come in your son's name, Yeshua HaMashiach. We want to thank you for the abundant life you've given us, for the angel that you have charged over us, Father. Thank you for your loving kindness, your mercy, and your grace, your goodness. You are our way maker, provider, and keeper. And we want to thank you for how you kept us down through the years, allowed us to see this time of dedication once again. Thank you, thank you. Father, we want to thank you for how you have kept us Oh, during the virus that's going around through the world, Father. We thank you for the shield that you have placed around your people, Father. And, oh, Father, although you have the shield around us, let us be wise that we not tempt you. And, Father, we want to thank you for the miracles that you've done for our people in that time, Father. And we want to ask that you would give us the mind to be as the Maccabees were, oh, to fight the enemy, Father. When he come to try to desecrate the temple that you dwell in, Father. For the writer said, know ye not that ye are the temple. Oh, Father, he that devoured the temple, he knows what God would do. So, Father, give us the strength and the mind to resist their adversaries when they come. For they were evil ones. And, Father, we want you to keep us in your will. Keep us in the hollow of your hand. That we do and be that that you will have us, Father. Mind that we will keep the covenant and not pollute your holy Shabbat, Father. Oh, writer said, if we just get our foot off your Shabbat, Father, that you allowed us to ride on the high places of the earth. And Father, keep us in your will, keep us in the hall of the hand, that that we endeavor to do on this night. We ask that it be pleasing to you, Father, in your son's name, the sure Hamashiach. And Father, the words that we speak and the thoughts that we think, Father, let them be accepted in your sight, Father. For you are our strength and you are our redeemer. And our soul says, Amen. 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 Take us to Father. In his name. Amen. 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 We'll now have a selection from our evangelist, Devon Frazier, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Amen. It's now in her hands. I can see Amen. That again. Bring greetings from Temple Shalom Outreach Ministry. Um, it's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where the pastor is Elder John Frazier. 
give honor to whom all honor is due. We thank him for this feast of dedication. And um, we just thank him for life, health, and strength and all he is to us. And we glorify him. I realize even through this epidemic um, that um, we've been going through and the different ventures that we have in order to uh, approach how we worship, how we connect with one another. But I thank him just for a connecting time. I thank him for being able to pick up the phone and being able to commune even with the saints that we weren't able to commune with. Mm -hmm. Pretty much for me as I go upward and onward in him. Yashur, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Yashur, you're the center of my joy. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You're the fire and light when nights are long and cold. In the sadness, you are my laughter that shatters all my fears when I'm all alone. Your hand is there to hold. Oh, Yashur, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Yashur, you're the center of my joy. You are why I find pleasure in the simple things in life. You're the music in the meadows and the streams. The voices of the children, my family and my home. You're the source and finish of my highest dreams. Oh, Yashur, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Yashur, you are the center of my joy. You are the center of my joy. Yeah, sure. You are 
the center of my joy. You're my peace. You're my comfort. You're my hope and all I need. You are the center, the center of my joy. Yeah, sure. You're the center of my joy, my joy. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Evangelist, for that beautiful song. Yes, Jesus is the center of our joy. Amen. Without further ado, we're going to bring our speaker on. Amen. It is our uh, state superintendent. He is also the pastor of the House of God in Richmond, Virginia. And amen. I just want to thank him personally when I called and I asked him if he would do this, um, that he was willing. And so I appreciate that. Amen. And so uh, we are going to present to you, amen, our Bishop Oscar Palmer. Hear ye him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We give honor to the Spirit of Christ. Honor to Pastor Thornton and the DC Church, Waterville Church, and my wife. All my family, to all of those that are fellowshipping with us tonight, Facebook Live and through Zoom. Great, we count it a great pleasure and honor to stand in this place to celebrate with uh, Sister Church in DC. We thank God for our Elder Solomon as well and for Missionary Adams and the service that they do um, annually. We thank God to be a part of it this year, talking about the Feast of Dedication. And for subject tonight, we will be talking about is your temple dedicated? Is your temple dedicated? I'm going to say a few words of prayer and then I'm going to sing a song. And sing a song and then we're going to move forward in Jesus' name. Gracious Father, we want to thank you for allowing us to come before you at this time. We thank you, Lord, for being with us throughout the day and allowing us to enter another day where we receive your new mercy. We thank you, God, for all the families that are represented here um, through Facebook Live, through Zoom, those that are in the temple this evening. We thank you, God, for the indwelling of your spirit and forgiveness of sin, for the blood that atoned for our sin through Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you, Father, that things are as well as they are. But as we stand before your people today, we ask you, Father, that you would guide us and give us, God, thy wisdom and the understanding that come from above through that Holy Spirit, God, that we may speak a word, O oh God, into the ears of your people, into their hearts, God, that you would open the heart and the mind and the eyes that you might see and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church in these times. Father, we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. If I walk in the pathway of duty, if I work till the close of the day, I shall see the great King and yeah, His Show me beauty. 
Keeping us during this pandemic. Amen. Thank God for all that He has done for all of us. Amen. Praise God. He's keeping us and we thank God that He's keeping our mind. We want to give God praise for that. Hallelujah. For it is He that keeps us and not we ourselves. Amen. We want to share with you uh, a few scriptures and as, as we look at, uh, praise God, even during this time, um, Hanukkah is celebrated. Uh, by many, praise God, and we understand um, history, the history behind um, Hanukkah, uh, all the feasts of dedication, praise God, um, in which the temple um, was dedicated over in uh, the book of First Maccabee. Not too many people read um, the Apocrypha, but these two books specifically deals with some of the history of the Maccabees and what had transpired during that time. And as we know, praise God, that during that time, there was one of the characters um, that's in the book of Mac Maccabee called Judah Maccabee. And one thing I find out about uh, history and historically about Judas Maccabee, he had a strong desire and a love for God's commandments, his laws and his statutes and the judgment. And he valued those things that his father, praise God, before him that had, um, had taught them the ways of God and they were able to um, go forth and, 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 and rise up against those that uh, came in against them. You might hear of the name, if not, do your research, Antiochus, he, the fourth, he was um, one of the people that came in after his father, um, the third, but Antiochus, the fourth, he pretty much um, dominated um, a lot of nations and from specifically he went into Jerusalem and what he did, he overthrew Jerusalem and during that time, um, he took um, those things that, um, that was holy and he went into the temple and he just, you know, took those things and defiled the temple. And, and what he did, he had sent out a decree um, against the Jews. So just a little history, I won't spend a whole lot of time, but just a little history. Uh, when, you know, when he went in, his thing was that, you know, naturally he being um, a ruler, he wanted the people that he had conquered, he wanted them to learn their ways, forsake their ways to learn about his God and forsake their God. So when Antiochus went in and he began to send the decree, he began to try to cause those Jews that was committed 
unto the Almighty to cause them to uh, not circumcise. One of the things that he went against, uh, he didn't want the Jews doing circumcision anymore, which that was the covenant that God had gave unto Abraham. Um, the other thing that he did not want them to do, he did not want them to observe the festivals, all right, the feast day. Another thing that he um, he attacked was the seventh day Sabbath, and he had given a, a, a decree, praise God, that if anyone that would um, would come along and observe the Sabbath or, or would circumcise um, their children according to the covenant which God had gave them, or anyone that would be keeping the feast then what, what, what would take place and he would kill them. Now, a lot, uh, some of the history and was that the women, when they had their children, what they did was they took their children because the women, they circumcised their children. But when they came in to Jerusalem again, they took the children of these women and they hung the children up. This is history. You can read about it. Um, but they hung those children up, these Jews, they hung those children up, they killed them. So it, it lets you know, because they did not want the Jews, they didn't want the people of God holding on to the covenant of God. So all of this was going on, so many, you can imagine that many of the Jews were fearful, and they didn't know what to do, but there was, there was one, praise God, that would stand up against that, and he was, was known as, as what, what we might call as one of those uh, guerrillas, <laughs> war fighters. What he would do, he went for and he gathered people together, those that, were, that had a desire for God's law, those that wanted to defend um, the Jews and, and their religion and their city. So he rose up and he began to fight back. And this man conquered a lot of territory. He was pretty much unstoppable but, you know, everything comes to an end sooner or later. But, you know, he had four other brothers, so all of them were working together. So just to bring this on in, praise God, once he had conquered, uh, Judas Maccabee had conquered much um, and, and got Jerusalem back, he went into um, the temple. And what he did, he began to um, dedicate the temple. But what he did, he, he began to build, turn down that old altar because he didn't want to dedicate something that they had um, kill a pig and, and on and, and, and just defile, you know, the altar. So he threw that down and he built another altar, altar. And what he did, he went and he got sacrifices and got burnt offerings and had the people to come forth um, to offer up the animals, the, the burnt offerings and of the sacrifice according to the law in order that they might dedicate this altar back unto God. So it, it's, it's, it's good information for you to look at. And, and I look at what really strikes me is that um, the zeal that he had and even to put his life on the line and many others because he loved God's law. He loved God that much and he loved God's people that he was willing to sacrifice his life in order to do that. So if, if we, if we, as I close out on this history, that's what he did and, and that's where the Feast of Dedication comes and if you go to Maccabee, the first chapter, you will see that on the 25th day of Kislu, Kislu, you'll find out that they dedicated this temple during that time. So that's just some history. And you will see, uh, I think it's Saint, one place in St. John, uh, the 10th chapter, I think it's the 10th, 11th verse, where you'll find that Jesus went up into the temple in the Feast of Dedication. It was winter. So this was tradition. This was a custom culture, something that happened in the Jews culture that they uh, they continue to hold on to it and they, they, they continue to practice it. So just because the history, we knew what was happen happening, we were able to um, understand that. And, and what I take away from that, that if we would um, have that same type of zeal, you know, concerning God's ways, have a love for God and have a, have a love for the things that he has given us, his word, his instruction, and his commandment. If we would have that same zeal, praise God, amen, where we were able to, to recognize, praise God, that we have to stand for something to lie down for nothing. And see, another thing, see, some of the Jews had compromised and 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 what, what went on during that time, some of the Jews were willing to 
uh, associated with the heathen. They took on the heathen way. That's why right. some of the Jews took on the heathen way. They took on the pagan way. They wanted to become a part of, of, of those uh, uh, and, and Tychus and those that came in. Praise God. So they can just, you know, it, it, it's what they did. They compromised and they were able to do that. And, and a lot of times when you compromise, it doesn't help. But there, not all the Jews compromise. Just like today, some of us, praise God, amen, we compromise our standing. We're living in a time now and the scripture builds that it's going to come a great falling away. Many people are going to depart from the faith. Now, this is nothing but Israel. Israel always had a problem of, 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 of loving their God and obeying their God and they, they just had to go somehow they want to be like the other nation. So even if you don't believe in the book of Maccabees and, and you don't believe in the apocryphy, if you know the history behind God's people or the Israelites, you understand that they, they were quick to go into idolatry, but not all. But there was always some people out there that was not satisfied with serving the true and living God, praise God. So therefore, when, when they continue to go forth and, and compromise, they get in trouble. And when they get in trouble, God would deal with the Israelites or he would deal with the people by allowing other nations to come against them. And once he allowed the other nation like and Antiochus, and then like Nebuchadnezzar, you, you're familiar with Nebuchadnezzar, amen, he would come in and, and he went in and, 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 um, and, and destroyed Jerusalem and burned Jerusalem and, and took the, the Jews, um, took them in captivity. And you know about Daniel, you know, Daniel went in captivity up under Nebuchadnezzar, also um, the Hebrew boy. But these people, uh, as Daniel and the Hebrew boy, they walked in integrity. Amen. They did not compromise the standards, the laws of God, the word of God. They held to their faith. They believed in the true and living God. Matter of fact, they had the only true and living God. And they had seen him work many times. So therefore, they were committed. And not only were they committed, they were dedicated, praise God, where God has called them into today. And that brings us into our subject. Amen. Praise God. Are you dedicated? Or is your temple dedicated? Because if we look at the saints of old, praise God, many of them, praise God, suffered um, persecution. Many of them, amen, had to go through things, praise God. Many of them held strong to the faith. They would not let, praise God, the ways of God, amen, go away. They would not forsake the ways of God. Why? Because keeping the ways of God, praise God, it gave them, praise God, a sure foundation. It gave them hope, praise God. It gave them a covenant. It gave them promises, amen, that if they would do it, praise God, that the Lord would bless them and that God would make them, amen, praise God, high above everyone, praise God. And see, even today, praise God, there are times when people, they, they look at that and you hear some say, well, you know, the commandments are done away with, but no, they're not done away with, praise God. He just put them in our heart, amen, praise God. He took them off the ark. He took them off the two tables of stone, amen, he put it in our hearts. So if you want to know about the commandments of God, amen, if you look at the New Testament, you'll find, amen, praise God, that God is still reserving, amen, praise God, amen, that's what he put into the ark. Now, I want you to go with me to Second Chronicles, the fifth chapter, amen, praise God, just looking at this, this temple, praise God, Second Chronicles, the fifth chapter, and I want to read verses one through ten. This is very important that we understand Amen, praise God. In the natural, the significance of this temple or this tabernacle or this, this tent, praise God. And that's what I want to look at because, amen, it was a, 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 a tent, praise God, where they could, they could take it down and they could, uh, at the time when they had to move, they could move around with it, praise God. But God was the one that had given them instruction, amen, to make this tabernacle. Or to make him a sanctuary. Amen. Make him a place. Why? So he could come and dwell in the midst of his people. So in that tabernacle, praise God, they had to uh, make sure that they put everything in there like God had instructed them. This was nothing, not something that man would come up and say, look, I think we need this and I think we need that. No, everything that was put in that tabernacle that was put in that tent or put in that sanctuary, it came from God. It was instruction that came from God and which he had given Moses. Well, if we look at 2 Chronicles, the fifth chapter, and I want to be begin at the first verse, just give you a little, little, little history in, in from the Bible. Amen. I mean, reading from the King James, it says, Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. 
And Solomon brought in all things that David, his father, had dedicated. And the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. So everything that came into the house of God, amen, everything that came into the temple, everything that came into the sanctuary, it had to be dedicated. Now, what we're looking at here, we're looking at Solomon. So now it's not... And what Moses had, they had tents where they can take down and they could move because they was on the move, praise God. Amen. But now Solomon has actually built God a house. And the same thing that God required in the tent when the children of Israel were on their journey, when God would come down and dwell in the midst of them, now Solomon, praise God, had, had brought forth what David wanted to do. He had built God a house, and yet still the same practices was carried out. Y'all stay with me just a little bit. So we looked at, praise God, that the gold and the silver, all the instruments of the tabernacle, amen, of the sanctuary, amen, praise God, it was dedicated. Second verse says, then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribe, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel under Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion or Jerusalem. Understand this, praise God, that the ark of the covenant, praise God, was always, praise God, put in its place. Amen. You could not leave out the ark of the covenant. And watch this, praise God. Wherefore, third verse, all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast which was in the seventh month. Now Solomon would dedicate this glorious temple, praise God, amen, in the Feast of Ethanim or the Feast of the feast of Tabernacle or the Feast of Boo. So this temple was finished. So now comes dedication, praise God. And, and, and you know what? You can't, be a, you can't have a dedication, amen, without having instructions from God, praise God. Sometimes people dedicate things, amen, praise God, but you need to know what God has required, amen, before you can dedicate anything, because if you don't dedicate it according to the way God has dedicated, you just got a house, praise God, amen. If you just got a house, amen, God is not dwelling in any house, and he's not dwelling in any tent, and he ain't dwelling in any sanctuary if his word have no place in your life, praise God. So if you, if, you, if you listen to me today, whether I say commandment or whether I say word of God or whether I say instruction, I'm talking about one in the same, praise God. You cannot leave God's word out because in God's word there is instruction. Is your temple dedicated? Praise God. Fourth verse. And all the elders of Israel came and the Levites took up the ark and they brought up the ark and the tabernacle of the congregation. Here again, that word tabernacle means tent. Praise God. Amen. They, it means that temporary dwelling place. But they brought up the tabernacle of the congregation. All right. And all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, these did the priest and the Levite bring up. If you look at the fifth verse, two things. If you heard them, maybe you didn't hear them. But listen what they brought up. One, time, one more time. And they brought up the ark. What was in the ark? The testimonies of God, praise God, his commandment. What was in the ark? They brought up the ark and they brought up the tabernacle of the congregation, amen, praise God. And all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, these did the priests and the Levite bring up Sixper. And the King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him before the ark, they sacrificed sheep, oxen, which could not be told the number for the mother to. This is what they were doing during the dedication, praise God. Amen. They were following the instruction, amen, praise God. Under the Leviticus priesthood, they had to do these things because God had imposed it on them, praise God. And they didn't do it, God would not receive it. That's very important because, see, God sets the stage in the old. He gives us, amen, foundation. He gives us structure, amen. And the structure that he gives us, the structure is really pointing to Jesus Christ, which is a foundation, praise God. So when we look at the things that God has put in place, and just like he told Moses, make sure, amen, that you make Amen, praise God. This tabernacle, amen, after the pattern that I give.
give you because the pattern came from heaven. Come on, somebody. The pattern came from on high, praise God. God knew what he wanted, praise God. And he gave man instruction, amen, what to give him, praise God, in order that this place might be dedicated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Seven verse says, And the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto his place, to the oracle of the house, all right, into the most holy place, even under the wings of the chairman. For the chairman spread forth their wings over the place of the ark, and the chairman covered the ark, and the, and the saved thereof. You know, I don't even know, praise God, God covered his word. When you understand about the ark of the covenant, you understand the mercy seat, you understand, praise God, amen, that in this ark contained God's word, contains his instruction, amen, praise God, and it was put, amen, praise God, right there, amen, praise God, between the two chairmen. Now, you got these two lights right here, and you're kind of hovering over my head a little hot, too, but nevertheless, praise God, remember, amen, that you had two chairmen on each side, amen, praise God, and they would hover, amen, over the ark of the covenant, praise God. See, you got to understand, praise God, that the ark of the covenant, praise God, it can, it, it can Contained, amen, praise God, amen, the relationship that God wanted, amen, from his people. He gave them instructions how they would walk before him. You can't walk in any way you want to walk when you belong to God, amen, praise God. Why? Because he made us, amen, and he has given us, amen, an understanding, amen, and he's given us things to do. See, sometimes people have problems, and so you mean we got to do that, amen, we got to do that. You got to do what God told you to do, amen, make sure that you keep, amen, your house in order, praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to get into the New Testament. Amen. Praise God. Because sometimes people, amen, they show all that's old. Testament. Let me tell you one thing. God always required obedience. Adam failed because he disobeyed. Amen. God has never, amen, praise God, put something in play, amen, to excuse you in your disobedience. Amen. Praise God. That's why he told us to repent. Amen. He explained to us what repentance is. Amen. Because when you disobey, you must repent. You don't disobey and keep doing the same thing over and over again and turn around and say, oh, I don't have to do that no more. Why? Who said you don't have to do no more? Jesus said, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophet. I'm not coming to destroy it. I come to fulfill it. Amen. Praise God. And bring, bring it to a fulfillment. Amen. It's giving us help to do what God has asked us to do. Don't let nobody tell you, praise God. Amen. You don't have to do nothing. Listen, when it comes down to salvation, you can't work for salvation. Amen. There's a difference in working for your salvation. Amen. Praise God. Salvation is something that he gives you. That is a gift. Praise God. That's what he gives us. Amen. But once he saves you, now you got work to do. Amen. Understand, once he saves you, once he gives you a new mind, a new heart, now you got work to do. Why? Because the Bible said we will create it. Amen. For good work. Amen. Praise God. So don't let, amen, praise God, someone come and tell you it don't take all of that. It takes everything that God told you to do. Jesus said himself that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. How is your temple? Is your temple dedicated? Praise God. Hallelujah. Because Jesus had a dedicated temple. Let me finish this up. Two more verses. We're going to move forward. Now, verse, and they drew out the staves of the ark that the ends of the staves were seen from the ark before the oracle. But they were not seen without. And there it is unto this day. This is the temper. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables which Moses put therein at Herod when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. Listen here. Israel has a role. Israel has been called to be a leader. Israel has been called to be teachers of God's law. Why? Because he gave it to them. That's their role, praise God. Amen. But where they fail, amen, and where they disobey, praise God, God knew that he was going to bring in, amen, his son, praise God, someone, amen, that would be a teacher, amen, someone, amen, that will walk in his role. And not only that, if you understand and appreciate what Christ has done, Christ became our high priest, amen, he is our king, amen, praise God, he is was an atoning lamb, amen, he satisfied, amen, the death, amen, that was hanging over our head. The Bible said the first Adam died, but it's through the second Adam that we are made alive. Now we're going forward, amen, in the New Testament. Just want you to understand, praise God, that God was very, God was very specific 
what he wanted, amen, praise God, in the tabernacle, amen, in order that the tabernacle might be dedicated, amen, praise God. And not only that, amen, those that went in the tabernacle, they had to be dedicated. Now we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do a shift, amen, praise God. We're going we're gonna to do a shift. I want you to look at, um, want to go to 1 Corinthians, amen, the sixth chapter, amen, praise God. Love God's word. God has given us an understanding, amen, concerning, praise God, what he wanted us to do, praise God. Remember that everything that he was doing in what they call or we might refer to the Old Testament, amen, but the Old Testament is still good because there still are some things, amen, praise God, that has not been fulfilled, amen. So you can't do away with the Old Testament, Amen. You can do away with the annual sacrifices and all the ceremonies and all the rituals. You can do away with all of that. That doesn't do us any good anymore because we got a better sacrifice. All right. Hallelujah. First Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Amen. God. Ain't nothing like getting the word of God. Thou says, so can faith come by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. First Corinthians, the sixth chapter, and we're going to pick it up at. Um, let me see here. I'm going to pick it up. Okay. The 15th verse. Is your temple dedicated? Amen. to the saints. And God, the 14th verse, 6 and 14. And God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us. By his own power. In God with you. This is what he says. To the Corinthians. He said know ye not that your bodies are. The members. Of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ. And make them members of the heart. God. Forbid. Now Paul is speaking based on his knowledge of God's law. Praise God. All is speaking and he's inspired, amen, to instruct them from out of the Torah, amen, praise God, concerning, amen, praise God, how they carry or how they are to possess the members of their bodies. 16 verse says, what know ye not, he which is joined to an harlot is one body. For two saith he shall be one flesh. 17 verse, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Amen. If you're connected with him and he's connected, amen, with you, then you become one with him. Look what he said. These are the instructions. These are commandments. These are laws written in a letter to the Corinthians. You can't get away from God's instructions. The Apostle Paul Amen. Receive Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive the forgiveness of sin. And he didn't preach any other doctrine, but the doctrine that came down from heaven, according to Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. God doctrine dropped down from heaven, and Paul is only preaching, amen, what was in his heart. Amen. He had Christ, amen, because and Christ had him, praise God, but he spoke something out of his heart. And he could speak it out of his heart because God wrote it in his heart, praise God. But now Paul has help, amen, praise God. And he understands now that I have Christ, I can't continue to go around and commit fornication. I can't practice fornication, amen, praise God. So if I can't practice fornication, amen, that's a do not. See, people get into a place, you know, you got to do all of this and do all that. No, but people have a problem with a do not. To avoid fornication is a do not. It's not too much to ask, but he's writing to the Corinthians, he says, in the 18th verse, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without other body. Mm -hmm. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. He's talking to the saints. He's talking to the believers. He's talking to the Christians. He's talking to a brethren and giving them instructions how they ought to possess their temple and how they're supposed to keep it. Because see, some people, amen, fall off into lust. Some people are saved, praise God, amen, but they're not dedicated. 
praying and not dedicating. But you got to be instructed, praise God, how to dedicate your body. It's something that you have to do once he has saved you in your temple. Dedicate. You think Christ, after he has given you salvation, do you think that Christ supposed to do everything for you after he's given you salvation? No, no, no. It's something that you got to do. So I want to say, praise God, to the churches, amen, praise God. If you have a problem, fornicate. You got to stop that. Save people don't practice fornicate. If you fail, get back up. And this is one thing. Praise God. But Paul talked about a lot of other things, amen, concerning the saints, praise God, that they shouldn't be doing, praise God. So if you find yourself in committing fornication, if you find yourself committing adultery, if you find yourself lying, if you find yourself backbiting, you have to do something about that. You can't walk around and do nothing or do nothing. Do nothing in regards to those things that's written in God's word because that's going against God's law. So whoever told you, praise God, that you don't have to keep God's law, amen, then you can go out there and practice fornication if that law was done away with. But Paul was telling the same, amen, praise God, for what was in his heart and what was in his heart, amen, he spoke out of his mouth. He wrote under the inspiration of God when he wrote these letters. Praise God. 19 verse 1, know ye not. That your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Paul reminds them that your body is the temple of God. This is the place where God resides through his spirit. He wanted to dwell in the midst of his people, but now he's dwelling in his people. Now we are a sanctuary or a tent or a tabernacle, and we still move it like they used to move the tabernacle in the wilderness. They were able to go here and they were able to go there, amen, and God was with them. But now we're able to go here and we're able to go there. We're moving now. We'll walk around. We'll move around. We go on our job. Everything we do, God is with us. Don't think, praise God, that God has to come down. No, he's already with us and in us. Praise God. It's your temple. Dedicate. Praise God. See, 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 some people do things because they have not been taught. Amen. Praise God. Some people, amen, will sin. And because they sin, amen, praise God. The best thing you can do if you sin is repent. That's what he tell. Amen. The saints to do. Brother uh, Apostle John said, I would not let you sin, but if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. Amen. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Right? See, sometimes you will fall. Praise God. I'm not, I'm not trying to encourage nobody it's okay to fall, but sometimes you might fall. Sometimes you might lie. Well, you know, I got the Holy Ghost, I don't lie. You just lie right there. You might not be committing fornication, but there's some other things that you're doing. Amen. Praise God. And the Spirit of God is there. Amen. Praise God. And He's telling you, Amen, to get it right. Praise God. Matter of fact, He's telling you to put it up. God, you love God, you put it out. If you love God that much, you stop doing it. That's why we got power to stop doing those things that's contrary to his word, contrary to his law, contrary to his mind. Is your body or your temple dedicated? Understand, praise God. You know, Judas Maccabee, and not only him, but David. You know who David is. You might not know who Judas Maccabee is, but David, amen, he said, amen, he was a fighter. Amen. He loved God's law. Amen. But David messed up too. Amen. Praise God. But God dealt with David hot. Amen. Praise God. And that's what the Holy Ghost does today. Amen. Praise God. He deals with us in our temple. Amen. Praise God. And we have to understand that when we mess up, get up. 20th verse. Hallelujah. We are overcomers. Praise God. The way that we overcome is through Jesus Christ. The things that we have not done and have not got right, we can get it right. This is, this is good news right here. That's why Jesus was sent to help us to walk this thing out, praise God. The, 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 the 21st says, For ye are bought with a price. Praise God. Therefore, glorify God in your body and 
and in your spirit, which are God's. See, we belong to God. Now, if you remember what I read in Second Chronicles, the fifth chapter, and then they brought in the dedicated things, the silver and gold and the utensils. They brought everything that had to be in the tabernacle. Those things was dedicated, praise God, and they had to do that. But now our body has been dedicated, amen. Our body, amen, praise God, has been consecrated, amen, by who? By Jesus Christ, amen. He has given us a new mind. He has given us a new heart. He has given us a new spirit, which our God, amen. God wants all of us, praise God, hallelujah. Go to read to Ephesians, the second chapter. Here's your temple dedicated, amen. Something for you to think about, amen, praise God. You can always, amen, praise God, make, praise God, this body, amen, dedicated. Why? Because you got to work on your salvation. I didn't say work for salvation. I said work on your salvation. You already have salvation. There's a difference. You cannot work for salvation, but you can certainly work or maintain your salvation after you have received Christ. This is what I'm talking about today. People don't understand. Some people don't understand that you got to maintain what God has given you through his son, Jesus Christ. How do you maintain it? Through prayer, through reading the word, through humbling yourself, Amen. To make it, put your own self in check. Amen. By listening to the Spirit of God, sitting in Bible study, sitting in, 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 in a, a Bible teaching church. Amen. They're going to tell you, praise God. Yes, you erred since you had the Holy Ghost. You have sinned since you had the Holy Ghost, and you're going to sin again, praise God, because you are not perfect yet, praise God. Amen. But he that is perfect is in you, and if you listen to him, praise God, and if you walk with him, and as he walks with you, amen, then you won't sin, praise God. But it's only when we stop walking with him, that's when we sin. It's when we obey this lust. The lust ain't going nowhere. Come on. We got a new mind. got a new heart, but the lust ain't going nowhere, church. Trying to be a super saint. Boast in Christ Jesus. Amen. Walk with him. The Bible said Enoch walked with God 300 years. How did he do that? He did it by faith. Yeah, yeah. Well, I say to the saints of God, everything that we do, our walk is by faith. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. If you walk by faith, amen, you're walking according to God's word. If you're walking by faith, then you're walking in obedience. Praise God. Don't let nobody tell you, amen, they talking about they got faith. And they don't want to obey what God told them to do, praise God, because your faith is based on, amen, God's word. So did faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God, praise God. It go all the way back to Abraham. The Bible said Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. But Abraham had a work, amen, praise God. When he offered up his son, amen, praise God, that was his work in action, praise God. And God saw that Abraham, praise God, was dedicated, amen, that he didn't put nothing before God's word. So he obeyed God's word, even if it would have cost his son, amen, praise God, his life. But thank God for Jesus, amen. Thank God for the ram that God put in the bush, praise God, amen, because he told Abraham, don't hurt your son, amen, praise God. The Lord has provided himself a lamb, amen, to be sacrificed. And this is what we're looking at today, praise God. We are uh, people that God has called out of sin. He granted us repentance, amen. He told us, amen, and he tells us how to maintain this temple. Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? Just in case you forgot who you are, you are the temple of God. Praise God. You are the sanctuary. Ephesians, the second chapter. Praise God. I'm almost done. Amen. I hope that this is making sense to you right there in these scriptures. Amen. Praise God. Now Paul, he writes to the Ephesians. Hallelujah. Amen. His letters circulate. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Listen to this. He talks to the Ephesians. Two and eleven says, Ephesians two and eleven says, Wherefore. These are saints now. These are believers. These are Christians. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by him. 
buffered. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promises. You see, the covenant of promises is to everyone that accepts Jesus Christ. Galatians 3 29 says, And if you didn't be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed? Abraham was a father of many nations. But he tell the Ephesians, just reminding them where you come from, and, and you remember you were Gentiles in your flesh. Amen. You did things, praise God, that, 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 that was not right. But now, amen, praise God, amen, you are no longer uncircumcised in the heart, but amen, you have been circumcised in the heart, praise God. And we have to understand, amen, when we look at Amen. And this is nothing new because the Bible lets us know in Deuteronomy 10 chapter that Israel was also considered by God as being uncircumcised. Amen. Why? Because of the heart. It's always been a hot thing about God. Praise God. Even though, praise God, they had the truth. They had the commandment. But their heart was messed up. That old heart is no good. Amen. Praise God. And it needs a new heart. And this is what God was allowing his people to know. Praise God. Amen. That I still Still require you to be circumcised in your heart, and anybody that come in contact with Jesus, anybody that receives Jesus Christ, anybody that He grants grace and His mercy to, you get a circumcised heart. Your heart becomes clean; it becomes new. According to Ezekiel the thirty-six chapter, and you are a new creature. You got a new mind, and all that belongs unto God. And that's why He said, "Glorify God in your body, because your body is the temple of God." He told Moses in Exodus the twenty-five. 25th chapter, he said, Moses, make me a sanctuary that I may come and dwell in the midst of you. Well, he has made us sanctuary now, praise God. Understand, do you understand who's inside of you? Do you understand what he went through, amen, to come in us? The Bible said that Jesus became sin for us who knew no sin. He did that for us in order that he and his father will come and make their bond with us, amen. So don't let nobody tell you that God don't dwell in no unclean temple. You ain't seen that scripture yet. And I haven't either. Because there's some unclean things done in this temple and God is still there. See, people don't understand that the thing that you do that's against God's word, if you're doing fornication, adultery, lying, stealing, backbiting, amen, those are unclean deeds and they are called work of the flesh. God didn't need you when you did this. So don't let nobody tell you that God don't dwell in no unclean temple. He's the one that said, I'm going to clean your temple up that we told Israel. Woo-wee! Praise God. I thank God for Jesus. He would kill us a long time ago. Amen. Tell me, tell me. Amen. He don't dwell. God not only dwell, but with Israel in their uncleanliness. Amen. He told them build a tabernacle right there in the midst of them. And Israel was adulterous. They were messing up. They were doing everything. But God said, Let, I want to get right there in the midst of you. And I provide, I provide a way, amen, for you to come to me. Amen. Praise God. We listen to the day of atonement. Every year, Israel had to make an atonement. Amen. The high priest had to go in and make an atonement for his sin and also for Israel's sin. Amen. But they had God dwelling in the midst of them. God was leading by a, a, a pillar of cloud by day and he led them by a pillar of fire by day. But God knew what they were. They were a bunch of messed up people. Amen. They did not have a relationship. They had a bunch of laws, amen, in which God intended for them to keep, but he would send Jesus later on, praise God, and this was the prophecy according to Jeremiah, that in the last day, amen, praise God, I'm going to make a new covenant with Israel, not after the days of old, praise God, but this new covenant is going to be done through Jesus Christ, you still going to keep, amen, my word, he said, I'm going to take them, the commandments, those testimonies that was in the heart, I'm going to take them off those two tables of stone, and I'm going to write them in your heart, I'm going to write them in your mind, praise God, and I'm going to seal them with the Holy Ghost, praise God, let you know, they ain't going nowhere. Hallelujah. Don't let nobody tell you how to keep God's commandments. Read them. Tell you how to love God and how to love your neighbor. That's why, praise God, they make you see a lot of neighbors against one another, brothers and sisters one another, because you don't know the love of God. Amen, which means you don't know the word of God, praise God. Amen, I know Jesus is love, but if you look what Jesus did, Jesus showed us the express image of God. Jesus showed us how to love and have compassion, and he was keeping the law of God. He was showing us the love of God by being obedient unto God. That's why Apostle John said, if you love me, keep my command. So why is that preacher talking about the command? Because it's right. I'm talking about the command.
Daniel preaches the word of God because the statue of the Lord are right. They rejoice the heart. Amen. I lie can rejoice my heart. I'm redeemed. Amen. When the redeemed know who has redeemed them and how they have been redeemed. See, we were not purchased with gold and silver. Amen. But we were purchased by the blood of Christ. I'm trying to get to Ephesians 2. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to, trying to finish that. Uh, to first that at the time you were without Christ, I remember when I was without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of Christ. Having no hope. And I ain't know, praise God, that I was lost. And without God in this world, it's, it's bad to be without God in this world. Amen. But sometimes, amen, you talk things, amen, that's not even biblical. But look at the 13th verse. He said, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made not by the blood of Christ. That's what we are pushing for today. Amen. Understanding how we was brought close to God. We were brought close to God through Jesus Christ, amen, and by the blood that he offered up unto us a better sacrifice. 14 verse says, for he is our peace, who my peace, Jesus is my peace. Who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of perdition between us. Talking about Jews and Gentiles. Should be no more division. Why? Because what Christ did, if you believe it and I'm a believer, if you receive Christ, then and, 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 there's no reason why we can't get along. Hallelujah. 15 verse says, having a body in his flesh, the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself a praying one new man, so making peace. He took out those laws of commandments and what he imposed on them. We don't have to do those things no more. Amen. Sacrifice. Hebrews will tell you about all of those sacrifices they had to do. Amen. Even down to the tabernacle. Amen. Look, they no more, ain't no temple in Jerusalem now. You don't have to go to Jerusalem and make no sacrifices because it don't matter anyway. Praise God. Jesus, the only sacrifice that kept God was pleased with Jesus' sacrifice. So don't worry about any other offerings of animals and stuff. If you're doing that, that's vain. Praise God. Jesus had made that sacrifice one time and for all. 16 verse said, he made peace for us. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. 17 verse. And came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were not. You, you, you see, when you, when you understand God's plan and you see God's plan, amen, those Gentiles that was far off, amen, praise God, have been now brought close, amen, unto God. Amen, praise God. Through the blood of Christ. And not only that, even though the Gentiles was far off, amen, Israel was far off too, praise God. Amen. How many know that even the Gentiles, amen, as, as Israel was adopted, so was the Gentiles adopted. That's why we'll go, go through that and look at that too. But we all was adopted into this royal family because you couldn't come in, amen, in your flesh. The only way you could come in was through God's son's flesh, which is the body of Jesus Christ. That's the only way we can come in to the body of Christ is through partaking of his body. He said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you don't have no life in you, praise God. So now we're able to come before God. Why? Because we have entered into the body of Christ. How? By the blood of Christ, amen, praise God. He has brought us in who were far away, praise God. And now he has made us fellow citizens. And the 19th verse says, no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. 20th verse, and I built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together, Growing unto in holy temple in the Lord. See, our temple is a holy temple. Why? Because he's made us holy. And we have to maintain the holiness that he has given unto us. And the way that we maintain the holiness that he's given unto us is to, by walking in his word, amen, or abiding in his word and his word abiding in us. That's how, how we can continue, amen, to keep a dedicated temple, amen, praise God. It's a daily walk, just like it's a daily sacrifice, amen. We have to, according to Romans, the 12th chapter, he said, present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy 
an example unto God, which is your reasonable servant, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Praise God. It's something that we have to do. Amen. Praise God. To make sure we maintain what he has given us. Praise God. He ain't going to come down here and die no more. Praise God. He did everything that he needed to do. Praise God. Amen. He has made us. Amen. Praise God. His righteousness. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. And without Christ, we can't do that. If we look at, praise God, second, let me touch the word here. This will be my last scripture. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for your patience. Amen. Is your temple dedicated? Amen. If you want to know if your temple is dedicated, stay in God's word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Because Jesus has did the work. Amen. Now we got to maintain the work that he's done, praise God. Maintain. Hallelujah. Want to look at Hallelujah. Hebrews. You close out with that. Hebrews, looking at Jesus Christ. Because he did all of this stuff for us to help us. It was Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hallelujah. Here's your temple dedicated. Is it? Between you and God. Amen. If you read the history and what God required, amen. All of those things that he required them to do, they had to do. <laughs> they had a lot to do. The thing that we had to do is maintain what he has given us. We still got the words of life like they had the words of life. But not only do we have the words of life, but we have the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's living within us. We have the Spirit of God in us. I didn't, I didn't write the script. Paul wrote it and Paul picked it up. He said, you know, we're the temple of God. We're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. So when we understand, amen, how he had made us, praise God, then we can appreciate it and walk in it. All right. Hebrews 10 mm -hmm. and 10. <laughs> By the which, this is my last scripture here. By the which we are sanctified <laughs> through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. This word sanctified also deals with praise God. Setting aside and also deals with dedication. This word sanctified also means clean. So we have been set apart. We have been washed by the water in the word of God. So we are yet being sanctified. Hallelujah. And have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. He did it. Amen. Praise God. He made us whole. 11 verse 10. And every priest standing daily ministering and offering off time the same sacrifice which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin, forever sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting to make his enemy be his footstool. 14 verse says, For by one offer he had perfected forever, then to the sanctified. Church. We have been sanctified by what Christ did, and he has consecrated us, amen, through his body, through the blood, maintain what Christ has done, amen, you do that through obeying his words, not ignoring his word, not saying I can't do this, you can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthen you, you can be what he wants us to be. Praise God. Jesus became what God wanted him to be. Praise God. He set an example for us so that we might know how to walk. Praise God. You have to fight the good fight of faith. You have to lay hold on that when he had given you eternal life because he's coming back forward. But you have to live, amen, a dedicated life. And once I say, see, a lot of times people, amen, yeah, they're saved, but they don't want to live a dedicated life. Amen. So you have you, 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 you walk in a halfway, but God don't want that. That's not what he wants for us. Just make it up in your mind, praise God, that you can live a dedicated life, but you got to put the work in. It takes work to live holy. It takes work to live holy. Why? Because you're constantly fighting. You have to fight on your job. You have to fight in your home. You have to fight in the church. 
Amen. You have to fight these sins because they go everywhere. You can keep your body holy. You can keep it dedicated. Why? Because he has given us help. He has given us the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. The 15th verse says, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, the believers, to the saints, to the Christians, to the brethren, Whoever you call yourself, praise God. Are you the redeemer of the Lord? Are you dedicated? Praise God. For after that he had said before, he said it in Jeremiah. Hallelujah. This is what the Holy Ghost witnesses to us. This is a covenant that I will make with them after those days. Y'all, we in these days now. After Jesus came and did what he did. He fulfilled the prophecy of Joel. Praise God. In those days, in the last day, he poured out his spirit upon his son and his daughter. Amen. He consecrated us through his body. So the Bible said, in those, after those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds when I write them. What is he saying here? This is what he would do when Christ would come to the earth, this is what he would do, praise God, through the Holy Ghost. Where did he do with his testimony? He put him in our heart. You can't find the heart, amen, but they're in your heart, they're in your mind. God put them somewhere where you don't have to pick them up, amen, praise God, and put two saws or two saves through the rings and transport them now. When we move, we got them in us. So that's why we know how to walk, because we have God's word, and we have the Holy Ghost in us, witnessing to us, amen, how to continue to walk in a dedicated life unto God. We have God's testimony. And how many know that God's testimony is sure? His testimony has been guaranteed. Jesus walked in these things. So he tells us what he was going to do. And he did it. 17 verse says, And their sins and their iniquity will I remember no more. God has done that. Why? Because Jesus offered his body for sin once and for all. And therefore, God will remember them no more. But what he has done, as I just read the scripture, you go back and read it. I want to tell you that this mind that he's talking about, that he would write in, and this heart that he's talking about, he's not talking about the stony heart. He's not talking about a rebellious mind. He's not talking about a rebellious spirit. No, he's not putting it there. What he did, he's putting it in a regenerated heart, a regenerated mind, a regenerated spirit. If you read Ezekiel the 36 chapter, you'll see what God said he was going to do. And he had did it through his son, Jesus Christ. So when you understand, where did he do with the testimony? He put it in your heart. So don't fight what God has put it in your heart. He ratified it through the blood of Christ. Amen. He witnessed it by the Holy Ghost. He said he was going to do that. I didn't know the Holy Ghost can't lie. I didn't know that God didn't lie when he told Jeremiah, this is what I'm going to do in those later days. Amen. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put it in a new heart. I'm going to put it in a new mind. I'm going to put it in a new spirit. And then I'm going to seal it with my spirit, the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to cause it to walk in my statue. That's how we will continue to do this thing. Yes, they're going to lay by the Spirit. God, they are the sons of God. Amen, praise God. But you got something in your heart. Amen, praise God. It deals with God. How many know the commandments of God? God's word is his character. It's his character. Praise God. And when we understand what he's put in us, that's how we come to know him. Now we got help. And the things that we do now, we do it because we love him. 18 verse says, now well, remission of sin, there is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, Thanks, believers, Christian. Boldness to enter in to the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that's his body, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. We are the temple of God. We are the sanctuary here on earth. He said, let us hold fast the profession of our faith.
faith, that's a good profession, without wavering, for he is faithful that promise, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the symbol of ourselves as the manner of some is, but exalting one another, and so much more as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, believers, saints of God, if we we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. That's Jesus Christ. There remaining no more sacrifice for sin. This is good knowledge here. But a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. What we see here. Amen. Praise God. Yes. He forgave us of our sin. Praise God. But if we sin willfully. After we have received the knowledge of the truth. Amen. And Jesus is the truth and he is the way. Amen. He is the one. Amen. That sanctifies us. Amen. And he's going to present us back to the Father. And how many know that when Jesus is finished working with us and helping us to work on what we're working on here, how many know that he's going to present us back to the Father? And we're going to be without spot and we're going to be without wrinkle. That's when we're going to be the perfect church. Amen. You cannot do it on your own. But you can use the help that he has provided with you, which is his spirit. He said he would do that, and he did what he said he would do. He put his spirit in us to assist us, to help us, to walk in his word. Be a light. Amen. Praise God. Walk in the light of his word. We thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. I hope that I said something. Amen. Praise God. And, and that will enlighten your eyes. Amen. Praise God. Don't walk away from the commandments of God. Amen. Praise God. Don't walk away from his word. Don't walk away from his law. Amen. Walk away from those things that he did away in the law. Amen. If you don't want to know what's done away with, call me. Call Pastor Thorne. If you want to know what's done away, I'll tell you. But it's sure not, not his word. Amen. God bless you. Let, let me have a prayer. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for your word. And we want to thank you, Lord, for all those that are hearing, all those that will see us. Father, we just pray that your spirit, oh God, continue to knock on the doors of your people, Father. We pray, God, for those that, amen, are at a, at a place where God would even question their salvation. Well, God, we pray, that God, that they would hear your word and understand, amen, praise God, that you know all things, amen, and you know your children, you know our weaknesses, and you know the things, amen, praise God, where we come short, and we're always going to come up short without you, Father, but we thank you for sending us, amen, praise God, one that never came up short, amen, as long as we stay in him, walk in him, and trust in him, we're going to make it. Father, we pray for those that don't know you in the power of their sin and their sin. God, that you would grant them repentance unto life that they may know you. Amen. Their Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you, Pastor Thornton. Amen. We thank you, God. Amen. Praise God. We thank and praise God. Amen for that word. Hallelujah. We praise him. We praise him. We praise him. I heard so much in that. Amen. I heard encouragement. Um, I heard uh, being reminded of who we are and who God is, hallelujah, and the life that we should live. I just, I, I thank God for that. I just thank God. And I also heard, amen, that if we ask ourselves if we are dedicated and uh, we find ourselves short, we find ourselves maybe not in that place. I heard that right now at this moment, praise God, we can do that. Amen. It's not too late as long as we have breath in our body. So we just thank and praise God. Amen. For our Bishop Palmer and that wonderful word that he brought forth. We are now going to have um, the lighting of the menorah. And before that, there will be uh, a prayer that will be said in Hebrew and also in English. And then we will light the menorah. Amen. And that will be done by our sister Mariah Adams. Praise the Lord, everybody. At this time, we're going to say the prayer in Hebrew, then English, and then Mike and Menorah. Baruch Hata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehecheanu Vikiyamanu Vihigiyanu Lazman Hazet. Praised are you, our God, ruler of the universe, who has given us life and sustained us and enabled us to reach this season. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now we will light the menorah. We start by lighting the shamash, which is the center candle. 
and then the lighting of the others. We are now in three days of the of the uh, feast. And so that's why you see the three candles. Amen. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. We just thank God for the service thus far. Amen. And we now also want to open it up for um, our Apostle Raglan to have remarks for any of our elders that are on the line, any ministers that are on the line, evangelists. We want to give you an opportunity to please have remarks. I know my pastor would like for you to do so uh, before we turn it into her hands for the benediction. So we will turn it now to our Apostle Raglan and let him start it off. Amen. God bless you, um, saints of God. We thank God for the service on this evening. We give honor to uh, our pastor at the House of God Church in Washington, D.C., uh, evangelist um, Louis Thornton. We thank God for the uh, word on this evening from our state superintendent, uh, Bishop Oscar Palmer, all of the, I was scrolling through who was in, who was on tonight, and I saw all the various ministers. We honor God for all of you. Um, the word tonight talking to us, telling us about, just ask the simple question. Is your temple dedicated? One of three things. Well, two things, really. Either you have never dedicated it and it needs to be dedicated, or you've dedicated it and that's been a falling away and you need to rededicate regardless of what that is. So I'm just uh, in, encouraging you tonight. If your temple is dedicated, glorify God and keep it dedicated. If for some reason it's been defiled, um, Bishop Palmer has given us instructions how to um, clean up the temple so we can be vessels ready for the master's use. Uh, God bless you, everyone. We thank yeah, God we for you. I just wanted to give space. Uh, is there anyone else? We don't know if there's any other elders or ministers that are on uh, that would like to have words at this time. Any deacons? Anybody that's on? Amen. That would like to have words at this Praise time. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise him, happy, elder. Yeah, happy Hanukkah. This is Bishop Harry Eaton. All the way to get on and say I enjoyed the word coming from our Bishop Palmer. Happy Feast of Dedication, and just know that we love you all, and just praying for everyone as we continue to uh, go through this pandemic, man, and we just know that God is, is going to bless us and continue to keep us, and so we're just trusting that the Lord is blessing you all, and uh, we're just here with the family enjoying Feast of Dedication service. You know, my wife is from the church there, and this is you know, a tradition that she has been keeping all of her life. And so we just wanted to join in and partake in the festival with the saints. So God bless you and God keep you all. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. This is Evangelist Portier. I'm rejoicing tonight. Give honor to Hallelujah, Bishop Ragland, Bishop Palmer, Apostle uh, 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 Ragland, Bishop Palmer, and also those, Hallelujah, Pastor Thornton. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Mary Simone for hooking me up. Hallelujah. We've had so many questions this past two or three weeks about this Hanukkah and Feast of Dedication. These are brand new people that are asking, and they're excited about learning the word of Almighty Yahweh. Bishop Palmer brought that word and made it plain tonight. And I'm thanking Hallelujah Almighty Yahweh for the rich word tonight. Hallelujah. And I've got New always knew the story of Maccabees, but just being able to build a bridge, hallelujah, from the Old Testament, hallelujah, right on through the New Testament, learning about, hallelujah, the ministry of Yeshua the Messiah and how we must come through the blood of Yeshua, hallelujah, because we are standing on his promises. Thank you so much, you all. Love you much. Shalom. Praise the Lord, saints. This is Elder Bailey from Texas, and we, the Texas Saints, just enjoyed the service. Thanks for inviting us to these services. Great word from Bishop Palmer. God bless. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. But anyway, I do want to thank everyone. I want to thank our sister Rhonda for everything that she has done 
um, our sister uh, Brenda, everybody who came on the line to listen in, to hear the word of God. Um, I thank uh, again to uh, Bishop Palmer um, so much. Amen. Now I'm going to turn it into the hands, amen, of our evangelist Thornton, and she will close out as she sees fit. Amen. Thank you all. Love you. We thank the Lord for our service on tonight. We want to thank all of the Gordonsville and Richmond Church and those persons who worked the video and the Zoom area for supporting us. We want to thank our missionary Simone for uh, heading up the service because at one time it looked like that we were not going to have it. And that would have been a miss after 40 some years. But we thank the Lord that we were able to have the program and my friends who are on, we thank you from North, South, East, and West for coming on. And we were just so blessed that we were able to do this Feast of Dedication and the good word that said, uh, is our temple dedicated? Because each year after we do the, the uh, Feast of Dedication, we rededicate our lives back to God and the church. So uh, again, it's been a blessing. We do appreciate it, and we just want to say thank you, thank you, and thank you again. So now for our benediction, I'm going to say a brief prayer, and then we're going to do our doxology. Father God, we just thank you again for the Feast of Dedication. We thank you for how we have the freedom of worship, and we thank you, Father, that you Allow us to keep coming, keep coming, and you never turn us away. We thank you, Father, for this feast of dedication again. Thank you. Bless those that were on and bless those who could get on. We just thank you. We're so grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord makes his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Shalom. Shalom. Have a blessed evening.